Hello and welcome back to more Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. For the last episode, we solved the puzzle out here in Crete in order to access the labyrinth. And today we are going to be exploring the labyrinth on Crete. And as soon as we step through these doors, first thing you're going to want to do is pick up two of the three statue heads right here. The legend of a labyrinth hidden under the ruins of Gnosis is true. The legend of Atlantis isn't any more far-fetched. Maybe it's true too. I'll bet the last stone disc and Atlantis are waiting for me somewhere beyond that door. As I said, pick up two of these three statue heads, but leave the third one, because what we're going to do is we're going to step through this doorway and then turn ourselves around, use Indy's Whip, which we'll find right here, on the third statue head to whip it through the door. And now we have all three statue heads, which are going to become very important later. But for now, we're going to walk up to the doorway, up these steps right over here, and then once we make it through this to the other side, we're going to head through a doorway over here on the right-hand side, and then we're going to go through a doorway over here on the left-hand side, and this is going to take us to a giant room with a statue, and when we go into this room, we're going to want to use Indy's Whip on the statue's head to cause it to fall onto a pressure plate below us and send us going downward below the surface. So as soon as we step on the pressure plate, we will just start descending. It's an elevator. Now that you're down here, you want to go look at the note that you're going to find right here. Wait, that was my ride. It says, I am convinced the map room lies beyond the chasm I couldn't cross. If only I weren't trapped down here. Too bad. He came a long way. Now be sure to pick up his staff before you leave. Then return to the waterfall on the right-hand side of the area and look at it. How nice. Wait, there's a chain running up behind the waterfall. It must be holding the elevator's counterweight. Well, that's certainly useful information. So now we're going to use this chain right here to ascend back up to the top. <clears throat> Ouch. I hate getting wet. And head out this doorway to the right, right over here. Head to this doorway on the backhand side. Then go to this doorway all the way on the left side of this room. And now is when we are going to use those three statue heads from earlier. We're going to use all three on this shelf up here. There's the first one. Here's the second one. And then here's number three. And this is going to open the door, and now we can step through to the other side. First, we're going to head up this uh, tunnel up onto the top of, uh, at the top of the stairs. Head to this doorway on the right. And while we can't cross this gap just yet, what we can do is use the staff with this chalk right here. There, the counterweight is free. Then return to the previous room. Head back to the door we used to get to get in here. And then head through this doorway on the right hand side. And then keep going forward further to the right. And now we want to use the staff yet again with the statue's mouth. Going up? Once you make it to the top, you want to pick up this golden box right here. There's an aura calcum bead underneath it. I'll take that too. Now that we have that, we can feel free to, to backtrack quite a bit, all the way back to even before the room with the three statues. So I'll speed this part up because I'm assuming you know how to get back here by now. If you don't, you can just watch me go back through these rooms, but there's no need to me explain it again, so I will happily speed this footage up for you. Once you get to this room right here, you are going to find a stone slab right here. There's a massive stone slab blocking the way. What you're going to do is push that stone slab. Sure is heavy. It's not going to work the first time, so keep pushing it. Did I hear it groan and protest? 
Keep pushing it. Did it move a little bit? Or is it my imagination? Come on, fall over. Bingo. I can't move it. And now we can head on through the doorway. And now it's time for the real fun part. Pr probably the best part of the fist path, actually, is when we get to use Indy's whip on this sonar cropping right here to swing across the gap. Pretty awesome, wouldn't you say? Anyway, now we can head to the doorway right over here. All right, here's what you gotta do very, very quickly. Walk past this hallway. What's that? Uh, it will get the attention of one of the guards, then quickly use the slab to hide behind it. Then as soon as the guard walks in front of it, push it to crush him instantly. Scratch one Nazi. Then walk down the hallway and save before you do so, because we're about to fight someone. Let's walk on down the hall. No, don't push the doorway, just I walk can't... down it. Shouldn't you be with the other foreign advisor? And where's Hans? I'll show you where. Again, alternate between punching him in the head and punching him in the legs. He's a bit tougher than the previous guys, but still not that big of a deal as long as you keep punching between the head and the legs. He will go down in no time flat. You'll notice, we barely survived that with only like a pixel of health left. So definitely the toughest uh, foe you'll face off against up until this point. And we're not even done yet, so save your game. And then head into the doorway in the back to proceed to the next section of the game. When we get to this point, you want to push this hanging column of rock off the ledge. Then retrace your steps into that room. And pick up the style site you'll find here. Sure is heavy. You are then I go a wandering among some mountains high. The five four foot I smell American blood. Oh, then I go a wandering among some mountains oh, Before you head down there, use the ship rib on this boulder right here. Oh, I'll just lever this thing over the edge and... Oh no, the ship rib broke. Looks like I'm trapped. You've probably already figured out what we're going to end up using this boulder for, just based on the, the shape of this doorway and the layout of this area. But we're not going to do that just yet. So before we do that, we're going to head down this doorway right here and talk to this guy. No, any good thinking, John? Maybe. Let me think. The answer to this is always random. So here's what I recommend you do: save your game and keep picking answers. That's a good one. I'll be on Until eventually way. he says that that is a good one. We got very lucky this time because we got it on the first try, but if you don't get it on the first try, then you can always reload that save and keep answering things until eventually you get it right. So what we want to do is use the stalus site that we picked up earlier with this boulder right here. Well, it shattered my rock wedge. But it worked. Then step on through the door and watch the show. Ouch. And the reason why we did that is because if we tried to actually fight the guy down there, we would have gotten our teeth kicked down our throat. He's dead. And there's an amber fish on a string in his pocket. He also had a couple of orichalcum beads. First thing you want to do is open up this gold box, and then scroll up, use these orichalcum beads the orichalcum with the gold box. The box. Then close the box, then use the amber fish on a string. It's not pointing anywhere. If it doesn't if it doesn't point anywhere, that's fine. It just means that this isn't the room that we need to use it in. It's random every time, as is with the case with a lot of things in this game. So what we're looking for is looking for rooms with pits. 
That sounds all specific, I know, but trust me, there's a method to the madness. So whenever you get to whenever you get to room of the pit, use the ambition extreme. Excuse me. It's not pointing anywhere. And then just keep trying that again and again until eventually you find what you're looking for. Well that's funny, it's pointing downward. Once you find this, once you find the room where the amberfish reacts in, walk to the pit, and then talk to the pit. Hey, down there! Indy, is that you? <sighs> I was asleep. Sophia, what are you doing down there? What do you think, you moron? I'm a prisoner. Get me out! I'll see what I can do. Well, we happen to have a very long rope, in the form of a whip. So use that on the pit. Thanks. I guess you finally got on Kerner's nerves, huh? I don't want to talk about it, but look what I found down there. It's the World Stone Sternhardt nabbed in Tikal. Very good, Doctor. Now that we finally have the third stone, we can return to the room where we crush the guy with the boulder. And then head to this doorway over on the left hand side. Come on, door, move! Well, either Atlantis is a lot smaller than we thought, or we've found some kind of map or scale model. Laid out just as Plato described it in three concentric circles. Okay, now that we have all three stones, we can use the sunstone on the spindle in the middle. Followed by using the moonstone. And finally, our newly acquired stone, the world stone. With all three stones in place in that order, we can now use it, and now we can align all of these stones in the position that we need them to be in. So, if memory serves, the outer one needs to ha uh, set the setting sun beneath its tall horns, the, mo the moonstone needs to set the new moon with the setting sun, and the world stone is going to be a little bit of trial and error. So, we have the city, west sea, the volcano, and the east sea. There's one, it's going to be one of eight possible combinations here, so we are going to try them all. First thing we want to try to do is to align the city with the darkness. Let's give that a shot. I said let's give that... No, I messed it up. I'm messing everything up. Oh dear. There we go. City with darkness. Let's give it a shot. So I got lucky and it worked on the first try, but it may not work on the first try for you because it could be very different. So here are the other possibilities that it can be. You can try to align the city with the full moon, you can try to align the city with the waning moon, try to align the west sea with the noon sun, try to align the west sea with the setting sun, try to align the east sea with the setting sun, try to align the volcano with the rising sun, and finally you can try to align the volcano with the waxing moon. One of those pop combinations is going to work for you and then once you find the one that does you can walk through this door. Oh wait 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 before we do that we want to pick up the stones. No 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 don't leave yet. Pick up the stones. Then we can head through the doorways. Pick up the world stone. Pick up the moon stone and pick up the sun stone. We are not done with them just yet. We're going to need them in the future. Head to the doorway. And then look at this stone pointer. Sophia, take a look at this. Hmm. According to the inscription, the arrow on this pedestal is pointing north towards the lesser colony of Atlantis. The nearest landmass up north is a volcanic island called Thera. Well then, that's our next stop. And now we can finally walk to the labyrinth exit, escape this on. place. And that will be for this episode, so thanks for watching, stay tuned for the next time to catch you all tomorrow for some more Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Goodbye!